Hi, welcome back. Today we will debug the Mule app and understand the basics of debugging. We have a demo project and also we have a calculator flow. This calculator app is taking numbers as input and adding them and multiplying them and giving the users the added and multiplied result. So it is taking A and B as input query parameters and giving the users the added and multiplied result. So this is the calculator app and today we are going to debug this and understand the different terms that we use while debugging the mule app. So let's add few debug pointers. So this calculator app basically has query parameters, no authorization information but we have a header parameter content type is the header parameter that we are passing in this calculator app and also we have a request body we have a http get method we have a calculator in the uri path so let's add some random message in the input body so let's try to debug this calculator app with these information. So let's select mule debug perspective. Here we will get mule debugger and uh, the attributes while debugging the application. So let's wait for it to deploy. This calculator flow has uh, subflows and uh, error handling scopes and all. So let's try to understand the success path and also we'll debug when we get an exception. Yeah, now we got the debugger point hit. So we got the HTTP request. So HTTP listener is listening to HTTP request which starts the execution of the flow and this logger is printing the input payload. So this HTTP request had the input payload, right? So we are getting this as an input payload and printing it as it is. So in the console, we can see the input payload. So this is the payload was part of the mule event. So whenever this HTTP listener got the input request, so in the logger, we are printing the input payload as it is. So we have a query parameters, headers, and request body as well. So let's see where, where we have the other attribute information. So we have, we don't have any variables, but if we check the payload, so this is the input payload that we are passing as part of HTTP request. So this is a input payload. And along with the payload and variables, we have attributes information as well. This attribute gives all the information that are part of HTTP request. Right, let's copy this attributes information to notepad or somewhere. So this is the attribute information where we have the query parameters, header parameters, and other information. So let's see what all informations that are part of this HTTP request attributes. So we can see we have uh, the list of query parameters. We did not have any URI parameters, right? We did not have the URI parameter in the HTTP request. We just have the path but no URI parameter. But we have the query parameter information. So we add A and B as a input parameters where we were passing the numbers for calculations. So we have a query parameters information. 
we don't have URI parameters but we have query parameters as array we have multiple query parameters and also in header we had content type right we were passing the content type as a header parameter so we have that information as well so this HTTP request attributes as all the information that we passed as part of the HTTP request so we can see the method information it was a get HTTP method and the path information and uh, the address information and all the information that are part of the HTTP request are available in this attribute attributes we have payload we have attributes information but as of now we don't have any variable information so you can click on F6 uh, to go to the next component and we have a evaluate data view expression where you can give the data view expression and click on evaluate to get the result for example if you want to get the query parameters from attributes just like how we access uh, the objects and the variables inside the object so we can access the information from the attributes as well for example uh, for query parameters it's like attributes dot query params dot the name of the query parameter so this way we can uh, give the data view expression evaluate it and get the result you can check the result whether you are getting the result as expected so if you want to just check what payload we are getting you can just use the payload and for attributes just use attributes dot uh, the type of the information that you want you want uh, the URI parameters query parameters header parameters so on you can just use this evaluate data wave expression and get the results by writing the data wave expression or you can copy the values and go to the data view playground and you can write the data view expression and play with it so for now let's go to the next component so we have a subflow so we are taking all the http request inputs and coming to the add flow so this particular transfer message is building the payload so we add the input payload already so in this transfer message we are building the input payload for http call so this is a http call for add operation so here we are building the request so this transfer message has built the request so this is what is the payload now so the input payload now got overridden from the payload that we have built in the transfer message so the payload now has the request for the http call so let's call the request and now we got the response the payload is still the same this is the input payload for the HTTP call. So the response that we got from the HTTP request call is saved in a variable. So let's click on the HTTP request and see where the response information is. So we are calling an API and getting the response. So once we get the payload, we are saving that payload in a target variable right that's the reason payload is the response payload is saved in a variable right the response one is the variable name now we can see that the variable count is increased previously it was zero and now it is one which has a response information so we called the add api and got the response and the response is saved as a variable so similarly so we got the response and printing the response by using the logger component and next we are calling the multiply operation so here again we are building the payload for multiplication so let's go to the next component now the payload is overridden because we are building the payload input payload again so this way you can keep going to the next component and see the information of attributes and payload and after the multiplication we got uh, the multiplied response as well which is again saved as part of the variable response to 
so the response to is also printed on the console so we got the http request attributes input payload and everything call the add operation and multiplied operation and multiplied and added results are saved in the response variables so response one and response two so we are using these variables and building the consolidated response so we got the consolidated response so this is the final output payload so this is the output payload the final one which will be given to the user if you still want to do some mapping you can just copy the json response and do the uh, come to the data view playground and play with, play with it or you can use the data view expression as evaluate data view expression as well so we got our final payload if you want to do the mapping again you can use the data view playground or you can use one more transfer message where you can build the payload but for now the latest payload that we have is the consolidated output that we are giving it to the user so uh, we have seen the request body was a payload input payload and the query parameters and header parameters were all part of the http request attributes so this was a happy path so now let's try to recreate some exception and see what information we get in case of exception so let's not give the input variable b so when the input is not passed we will get an exception while calling the api so we have built the input payload without a parameter b without an information of the b parameter so we got the internal server error so when we called uh, the http request we got the failure and now it should go to error handling scope right we went back to the flow and now we have come to the error handling scope so now we can see that we have a error object so all the error informations are present as part of the error object so now we can check the last payload what was the last payload so input payload was the last one here we can see that we don't have a parameter b so we got uh, the internal server error because we did not pass the input that was necessary to compute addition so we got the error information and if you want to extract some specific error message or something you can use the data view expression and evaluate it like error dot description or error dot fail component or something you can you can just write the expression and evaluate it and get the response or in another way you can copy the value the complete error information to the data view playground and here you can write the data view expression so there is something wrong in the way we copied the information so let's uh, remove the output string so now we are getting the error information so this is the error information value that we have copied from the from the mule debugger right we just copied the error information so here we can see that the all the information that was a uh, part of the error is present so if you want to extract a specific information you can do that for example the error description so payload dot error message so if you want to build the specific payload for error information so you can 
you can write it you can write the data wave expression for that so let's uh, try to get the failed component information so what exact component is failing so from where exactly we are getting this error so let's try to get the failed uh, component information this is uh, one of the way how uh, you can actually copy some information you can copy the payload or something and do the mapping so this is i feel one of the easy way to do the data mapping so let's try to get the error description and uh, failing component information together so that when we get the exception we will get more information about the error so let's try to get the error description and failing component together so this is uh, the data view expression so we can copy this expression directly and use it in the transfer message so let's copy it and in the transfer message just paste it so this is a variable error object as of now uh, we don't see it because uh, we have to build it again previously we add a complete error object so let's uh, try to debug again so now we are building the error object so let's try to give the user the error object information so error object will have the information of the error so let's remove the payload this error object will have the information of the error description and also the fail failing component information so whenever we get the error response so let's say that we will give the user the error object information so in the http listener response tab will have the information related to the response there we have to tell what information we gives in case of success and failure so let's try to debug again so we got the input attributes payload and everything so let's go to the http call so we got the exception so we came to the place where we are building the error object so we got null because we are using payload it should have been error because error will have the error information error object will have the error description and failing component this payload was something that we got from the data we playground right because that play playground has everything as a payload but the error information will be present as part of the error object so let's try to debug again so we are calling the http request with missing parameter we got internal server error and this time we got a error object with just error description and failing component right now it's uh, the data we expression related to the error is working fine and we are able to see the error information like the way we expected just the error description and the component information which is failing so this way you can debug the app and see the attributes payload sometimes the payload that gets overridden uh, or attributes will get overridden so this way you can debug and understand uh, what's going wrong and also you can use uh, error object to get the error information and build the custom payload that's it for today thank you see you in next session